Good morning. Good morning on Facebook and YouTube. Welcome back, everyone. How are you today? And let's see if Instagram is going to start it. I don't know. Something is going on. It's not connecting. All right. Well, anyway, while we wait for Instagram to connect, good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Today is Friday, January 6th. 2023 this is the day that the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it so today's feel good friday i hope everyone is feeling good today <clears throat> excuse me i am i wasn't here yesterday and i really do apologize um i went out those of you on my facebook page know i went to the nick game on wednesday night and i didn't get home until after one o'clock in the morning. So I think by the time I got to bed, it was probably two o'clock in the morning. And um, I woke up late, quite honestly. I woke up at quarter to eight. And um, when I woke up, I felt like I was getting sick. Well, thank God as the day went on, I didn't get sick. But when I woke up, I felt like I was getting sick and I just could not um, pull it together to get on here so I missed the whole I missed thankful Thursday so I do apologize and um so that's the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth that's what happened I went out I got home super duper late I got to bed late and I got caught in the rain in Manhattan I couldn't find my umbrella before I left here anyway I came up out of Penn Station went to go meet my cousin uh cousins for dinner and it was raining, and so it wasn't that far, so I walked in the rain. And, um, yeah, so I felt like I was getting sick when I woke up yesterday. But, you know, like I said, thank God I am um, not sick and I'm back. All right, so what are we doing today, Allison? Today we start Second Timothy. So we'll be reading Second Timothy chapter 1. And um, it's only 18 verses. So we are going to, let's see, I do have one, two, three, four, five, about five verses written down in my notes. We'll see what the Holy Spirit has to say to us today. So we're going to pray and we're going to jump right into the reading of the word and I'm still going to try. You know, it's the sixth already. And so I haven't fulfilled, uh, kept my word and fulfilled my my um promise to come on at night and pray so i need to make that happen because we are now almost finished the first week of january so i got to be timely in my assignment all right so i'm gonna i'm going to um make that happen and i'm also trying to figure out i'm still trying to figure out my fast i think i've decided i'm going to start my fast on monday and I just got to figure out exactly what I'm going to do. I was praying about that this morning, that God would give me direction on how to fast. But I'm going to try. You know, I really feel like I need to just shut it down and cut off all, if it's not a really important, urgent conversation, if it's not a conversation that I have to have, don't have it, you know, just really lock into God for the next couple of weeks and hear his voice. And um, I can't be distracted. <clears throat> it's critical, it's crucial, excuse me, um, that I not be distracted in this season. So um, I, I'm, I'm really trying to figure out this whole fast thing so that I get it right. It's the beginning of the, of the year. The first week is just about over now, right? And so I gotta, I gotta get myself together. So let's pray and let's get into the reading of the word. Let me open my, I accidentally closed my notes. So let me open my notes back up and get myself positioned. I was supposed to be wearing a um, baseball cap today. I had it in my mind that I was going to have on a baseball cap. I couldn't get the, I couldn't get any of my baseball caps over my hair. This not, not with the ponytail, but I just, I couldn't get the baseball caps on this morning. But you know what I say? I say, thank God, because before I went natural, my hair had thinned so much that it was, um, actually quite scary so when I couldn't fit my baseball cap on this morning over my hair I said well thank you God that I have enough hair that it was a struggle to try good morning cousin I love you 
um, that it was a struggle to even try to get the baseball cap on this morning. So um, I thank God for all things, big and small. All right. How are you feeling, cousin? Good to see you this morning. All right. So let's pray. And then we're going to get into 2 Timothy chapter 1. And I'm going to read it out of the ESV translation. All right. Let me get my um, 2023 declarations up so that we can run through these. All right. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I bless your name this morning, oh God. Father, I give you glory, honor, and praise. Lord, I thank you for allowing us to see 2023, oh God. I thank you that you still have work for us to do in this earth. So, Father, I pray that we will have a heart to hear, to receive, and to be obedient, oh God. Open up our ears that we can hear you clearly, God. I pray that you will fine-tune our hearing to you, Lord, that we will not miss anything that you were trying to say and communicate with us, oh God, but that we will hear you clearly, accurately, precisely, oh God, that we will be obedient to the assignment that you have given to us, oh God. Father, I thank you for all of our family members. I pray, Lord, that you will continue to keep a hedge of protection around us that cannot be broken, penetrated, nor compromised in any way, shape, or form. Father, I pray that if there are any members of our bloodlines and our family members, oh God, that have not given their lives to you, Lord, that this will be the year, that this will even be the month, Father, that we will see a turnaround, that they will begin to turn their heart and their faces back to you, oh God. So Father, I pray for a divine encounter that you will even send somebody across their paths that will speak to them, that will cause them to want to turn their hearts and souls back to you, oh God. Father, I thank you for each and every person that is on here with me this morning, oh God. Father, I thank you for their lives. I thank you for each and every person that will watch the replays that will watch on YouTube, oh God. Father, I pray that this word this morning, as I read your word, as we read 2 Timothy chapter 1, that it will minister to each and every person, Lord, that it will that they will see or hear something in your word new that they have never heard before, oh God. So Father, I thank you. And as we are at the beginning of 2023, Lord God, we just pray for our year. We pray that you will bless it, Lord. Father, we pray that everything will be in divine alignment with your perfect and holy will. God, we thank you and we pray that we will operate in divine timing, that we will not go out before you prematurely and we will not be late and miss anything that you have for us, oh God. But that we will operate in divine timing. We will be in sync with what you have for us to do when we are to do it. Father, give us wisdom and revelation. Give us knowledge and understanding. Father, let us never be in the wrong place at the wrong time. But Father, divinely position us and orchestrate our steps, oh God, that we will always be exactly where you want us to be in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we decree and declare over 2023, Father, we thank you that you will supply every need of our hours, oh God. Father, we thank you that every need will be met. Father, we thank you that we will not be anxious for anything, Lord. Father, we thank you that you will not withhold any good thing for us, oh God. We thank you, Lord, that not one word of all of your promises will fail, oh God, but that everything that you have spoken into our lives, everything that you have promised to us in your word, Father, we will see the realization and the fulfillment of those things, oh God. In 2023, I decree and declare we shall seek first the kingdom of God in 2023, I decree and declare that we shall put you first, Lord, in everything that we do. I decree and declare that we are blessed in every area of our lives. In 2023, I decree and declare we are divinely protected and fully provided for. Father, I thank you in 2023 and beyond that we will be sustained, oh God. Father, that we will have all of the resources, all of the food, all of the finances that we need when we need it, oh God. In 2023, I decree and declare declare that we shall recover all. I decree and declare that I shall recover all. I will recover all. Allison shall recover all, oh God. Father, I thank you in 2023 that we are moving forward, forward forever and backwards never, oh God. Father, I decree and declare in 2023 that we shall have a year of overwhelming joy. In 2023, I decree and declare that we shall bear good fruit and our fruit will remain. Father, everything we put forth our hands to do, we will be be blessed and they will succeed. In 2023, I decree and declare we will experience divine recompense. In 2023, I decree and declare we will experience divine healing. Father, I pray that you will bless us and release healing in our bodies from the tops of our heads to the soles of our feet. Lord, that we will experience healing 
sorry, Instagram just ended. <clears throat> Excuse me. That we will experience healing, God, that you will touch our organs, cause our organs to operate at 100% capacity, oh God. Father, I thank you in 2023 that we will have everything that you promised. Father, I thank you that in 2023, I decree and declare we refuse to settle for anything less than your best for us, Lord. I thank you in 2023, our vision will expand. We will write the vision, make it plain and execute it successfully in 2023, Lord. Let our wisdom, discernment, health, and finances increase exponentially. In 2023, I decree and declare our youthfulness and vitality shall be restored. In 2023, we shall see the prophetic words spoken into and over our lives come to pass. In 2023, we will not be behind schedule and we will be in perfect timing with you, O oh God. In 2023, we will have extreme favor with every person we meet. In 2023, I decree and declare, according to Romans 8 and 28, all things are working together for our good. As we walk into 2023, I decree and declare that we are walking into our wealthy places. In 2023, we will experience newness all around us. So Father, I thank you for new mindsets, new relationships, new homes, new cars, new jobs, and new levels of wisdom. In 2023, I decree and declare we will not be distracted by the wrong people, places, and things, but we will be focused and productive this year. God, I thank you in 2023, all time lost and wasted will be redeemed. In 2023, we will experience supernatural acceleration, oh God. Father, we will catch up with exactly where we are supposed to be. Father, in 2023, I decree and declare we will regain our focus. I will regain my focus. We will regain our drive, our energy, and our passion. In 2023, I decree and declare all hindrances, blockages, fear, and doubt will be removed. In 2023, we will release everything that is not good for us. In 2023, I decree and declare we will not stumble, we will not fall into error, we will not miss it, and we will not be cut off. In 2023, I decree and declare we will have joy, peace, and rest. In 2023, I decree and declare our children and grandchildren will excel. In 2023, our love, our unsaved loved ones will be saved. In 2023, I decree and declare there will be no premature death. There will be no untimely deaths in our families, oh God. I decree and declare there will be no sudden deaths and there will be no accidental deaths. In 2023, God, let every curse be reversed. Let every enemy be silenced. Let us hear your voice clearly and respond appropriately. Let us win and have victory in every area of our lives. Let every crooked path be made straight and remain straight. Let the anointing of the sons of Issachar be upon our lives, Lord. Let us know what we ought to do. Father, let mountains be moved out of our way this year. Let everything that we do be done in divine order with the spirit of excellence. Let divine marriages take place this year, oh, God. Let increase be our portion. Let our borders and territory be expanded. In 2023, let it be a year of wonderful surprises and powerful testimonies, oh God. In 2023, let it be a year of miracle signs and wonders. And let 2023 be blessed from January 1st through December 31st. And Father, as I prepare to read I say, have your way. Use me how you want to use me. Say what you want to say. Do what you want to do. I yield myself 100% to you, Holy Spirit, that you will take control, that I will say only that which you would have me to say and communicate with your people this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. All right, the connections are... Oh, I forgot to pray for the connections. Well, we've lost Instagram. Something's going on with my phone because when I... um. Actually, I don't even want to share it. There's nothing to share. Um, when I set up in the morning, I have to take the picture for my thumbnail. And it's not, it wouldn't even, it wouldn't even load on this phone. So I don't know. I might have to reboot the phone. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, let's get into the reading of the word this morning. Like I said, we're going to be reading 2 Timothy chapter 1 out of the ESV translation. And it reads, Greet, the title here is Greeting, and then Guard the Deposit Entrusted to You. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus, our Lord. 
guard this section, guard the deposit entrusted to you. I thank God whom I serve as did my ancestors with a clear conscience as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt mm -hmm. first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to, flan, to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of of God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appear appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher and apostle and teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound. Oh, I'm sorry. Follow the pattern. The <coughs> excuse me. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. Guard the good deposit entrusted to you. You are aware that all who are in Asia turned away from me among whom are, oh my, I forgot to look up how to say this word. For jealous and Herm Hermogenes, I don't know, sorry. May the Lord grant mercy to the household of, here we go again, Anisif, An Anis, uh, 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 sorry, that's it. O-N-E-S-I-P-H-O-R-U-S. For he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. But when he arrived in Rome, he searched for me earnestly and found me. May the Lord grant him to find mercy from the Lord on that day. And you will know all the service he rendered at Ephesus. What is this word? Anisif? Anisif? I don't know. I'm still... Let me look it up later on so I can get it right the next time I come across it. Okay, so let me get into <laughs> let me get into my notes. See, and I said to myself, I said, let me go on to um, let me research this and see how to say these words correctly before I butcher them. All right, verse seven here in the ESV. For God has not given, has not forgot this translation says for God gave us a spirit not of fear but of power and love and self-control now we all know this in the King James translation which is for God hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind now let me see I also wrote this in the Amplified to read this to you out of the Amplified for God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal, your connection, my connection too, and personal discipline, abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. <clears throat> okay, that was verse seven. Verse nine. For he delivered us and saved us and called us with a holy calling, a calling that leads to a consec this is the amplified, a calling that leads to a consecrated life, a life set apart, a life of purpose, not because of our works or because of any personal merit. We could do nothing to earn this, but because of his own purpose and grace, his amazing, undeserved favor, which was granted to us in Christ Jesus before the world began eternal ages ago. 
So why did I write this down? I wrote, wrote this down. It says, um, he delivered us and saved us and called us with the holy calling that leads to a consecrated life, a life set apart, a life, of, a life of purpose, that we should just not be wandering around aimlessly. But there's a reason why God has us on the earth on January 6th, 2023, right? And then it goes on to say, not because of our works or because of any personal merit, we could do nothing to earn this, but because of his own purpose, God's own purpose and grace, which was granted to us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Now, let me see if I can simplify that here in the ESV. Not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace. Right. So it's all the, it's like a gift from God, right? He's set us apart. He's called us. It said we live a, a purposeful life. We're consecrated, set apart, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. Let me go on to verse 10 and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished, listen to this, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Again, our Savior Jesus Christ abolished death, brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. That was verse 10. Verse 12, I have verse 12. Let me read it in the ESV and then I wrote down the message. Which is why I suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. All right, where's the message? Verse 12. I'm going to read, it has here 11 and 12 combined. This is the message I've been set apart to proclaim as preacher emissary and teacher. It's also the cause of all this trouble I'm in, but I have no regrets. I couldn't be more sure of my ground. The one I've trusted in can take care of what he's trusted me to do right to the end. Good morning. Good morning. I don't, you, I don't think you missed too much, Kimberly. I didn't see when you came on, but good morning. Blessings to you today. Um, Okay, so why did I write 12 down here? It says, I have no regrets. I couldn't be more sure of my ground. The one I've trusted and can take care of what he's trusted me to do right to the end. Okay, so for me, this is just comforting. This is just reassuring, right? God is able. So what I hear here is God is able. God is, just, I've trusted in him. He can take care of what he's trusted me to do. So I surrender to God and say, have your way, God. Use me how you want to use me. Right. And believe that he is able to walk me through, that I will be able to complete my assignment. So here. Um, let's see. Let me see the amplified. That was 12. Let's see what the amplifier says. Oh, I like I think I like this. This is why I suffer as I do. Still, I am not ashamed for I know him and I am personally acquainted with him. So I have a personal relationship with God whom I have believed with. Here, listen to this. Absolute trust and confidence in him and in the truth of his deity. And I am persuaded beyond any doubt that he is able to guard that which I, I have entrusted to him until that day when I stand before him. I'm going to keep going and and keep and follow the pattern of sound teaching doctrine, which you have heard from me in the faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. Number 14, verse 14. I have this in my notes as well. Guard with the greatest care and keep unchanged the treasure, that precious truth, which has been entrusted to you. That is the good news about salvation through personal faith in Christ Jesus and through the help of the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Um, I also have it in the message in my notes. Let me read it to you there. 
This is 13 and 14 in the message. So keep at your work this faith and love rooted in Christ exactly as I set it out for you. It's as sound as the day you first heard it from me. Guard this precious thing placed in your custody by the Holy Spirit who works in us. Now I love here in the message that it says guard this precious thing. Right? The word of God is precious. Our relationship with God is precious. Guard this precious thing. Salvation is precious. Guard this precious thing placed in your custody by the Holy Spirit who works in us. So the title here I said was, um, let me go back to the ESV. Guard the deposit entrusted to you. So if I just think about that, guard the deposit entrusted to you. Don't let anybody um, talk you out of your faith. Don't let anybody convince you or try to convince you that God is not real, that the Holy Spirit is not there, right? Is not real. So guard it. You have to guard the word, guard the teaching as you pray, as you read the word, as you study the word and learn. Guard it. Because there's always people that are going to try to say something contrary to try to tell you that God is not real, that miracles don't happen, that God cannot heal, right? And so we have to guard it. And this is why we have to guard our ear gates, eye gates. Be careful about who you listen to, what you allow to take into your spirit and your mind, right? So I... I put all of that together under this umbrella of guard the good deposit entrusted to you. We're fortunate that we live in a country where we have access to the Bible. We can read the Bible. We can pray. We can talk about God. We can say the name of Jesus Christ. There are other people who live in countries where some of them have never even heard the gospel. They don't know about Jesus Christ. And then other countries where they can't say it openly and freely. So we have to cherish. And this is why... I happen to love it in the message when it talks about guard this precious thing placed in your custody. This is a privilege to me. It's a privilege and an honor to be able to know God, have a relationship with God, read his word, pray, have a um, have a prayer life, have an intimate, like I said, an intimate relationship. That's precious. So we have to guard it. We cannot take it for granted, right? And we just have to be diligent in trying to keep our prayer life intact, stay in the word of God, keep sound teaching in our ears and not the, let the world pull us away and get us all um, focused and caught up in a whole lot of nonsense and foolishness, right? Especially now in 2023, the way we see the world going and all of the different things that are going on, it's not the time to be caught up in a whole lot of foolishness. It's the time like never before to try to hear the voice of God, to try to understand and ask him for revelation and wisdom of what exactly, exactly what is going on? What is my purpose? What am I supposed to be doing this week, God? What is my priority? What's the agenda you have for me, Father? Where, where do you want me to go? Where do you want me to be so that I can speak to the people that you want me to speak to? right? Because we all have something to offer. We all have testimonies that we can share. We all have experiences. We have something that we can share and minister to somebody else that will bless somebody else. And so I always want to be in the right place at the right time that I can say something, that I can share something with somebody that will uplift them, that will encourage them, that will motivate them. So we have to, in, in, in order to do that, we have to guard what, what God has deposited in us and not let people talk us out of it and um, not let the enemy come and overwhelm us with any sort of spirit of depression or anything like that. So we just have to stand, stand firm in our faith and believe, like it said here, that and believe, this is verse uh, 12, Right. I couldn't be more sure of my ground. The one I've trusted in can take care of what he's trusted me to do right to the end. So, again, in my mind, when I hear things like that, I'm always thinking about divine protection. God can always protect me. You know, Psalm 91, that God will give his angels charge over me. So I believe that God can keep me in my walk. But that means I can't turn my back on him. Right. 
I have to maintain my relationship with him and keep my prayer life going, stay in his word and um, continue our journey. Just press on, press on in the things of God, try to fulfill our assignment to the best of our ability and always be on the right, you know, on the right track, on the right path. That's what I got out of this. All right. And here in the, what is this? I have a, the message now. It says here to be bold with God's gift, gifts, plural. That's the title of um, starting at verse three through the end. That's what they said. Be bold with God's gift. So don't be timid in your faith. You know, share, share your faith with people. That's how I take that. Be bold with your gifts. Be bold in speaking about God. Be bold in your faith. Be, you know, share the word of God with other people. There are people who, who never say anything. They never tell anybody about Jesus, you know, but we need to share our, share our faith, testify, talk about the goodness of God, talk about the mercy of God, the grace of God. That's why I try to come on here and tell you about different things that I've, that I've gone through, that I know that God is a healer, that I know that God is faithful. And as I share things that I have gone through, that God has brought me through, hopefully it will encourage somebody else. And as they walk through, through different seasons, maybe it will come back to their remembrance and they will have faith and um, peace. You know, we still have to go through things while we're on this earth. But we believe that God will see us through. He will bring us to the other end successful. All right. That's my my three cents this morning. All right. I'm sorry about the connection port Instagram. I just had to shut it off. But I pray that um, everybody, I pray on Facebook that you guys could get something out of this, that the, the um, connection didn't drop too much for you. All right. Everyone have a wonderful, wonderful weekend today. Again, today's Friday, January 6, 2023. And we read Second Timothy chapter one. So today we started a new book of an, yet another book of the Bible today. All right. So I'm, I'm happy about it. I don't know what the um, the count is today, but I'm glad we're, we're pressing our way through the New Testament. We'll have to go back because we didn't start at the beginning. We started at the book of John. So we'll have to go back and get um, start at the beginning eventually. But we're still pressing our way through. So I'm excited about it. I'm glad. All right, everyone have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Today is Feel Good Friday, so I pray that you all feel good. Take some time. Um, hopefully, you'll have some time to do something nice for yourself. Pamper yourself this weekend. Do something nice for yourself. All right, everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, and I will pop up soon to do our declarations at night. All right, have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye.